You've killed someone while you were on marijuana, haven't you? No. Yes, you have. No, I haven't. Take that off. Why are you lying? I'm not Does lying. Does marijuana make you lie, too? I'm, I'm not lying. Oh, oh, so you've never lied? No, I've lied. Ah, so you did kill someone. Hi, everyone. It's your boy, Zach, uh, taking full advantage of this one day a week I have given myself to make YouTube videos as a reward for getting out one of my many late books to the printer. I've got another three that should go within probably by next week. Um, but anyway, um, this is a fascinating one-two punch or maybe more precisely the last nail driven into the coffin of cancel culture. But before we start, First Kill Graphic Novel link is in the description and I'm probably going to do a community post reviewing this. The Energon universe is uh, just excellent. I love it so much. Uh, so uh, <laughs> we'll start off uh, a couple days ago <coughs> where Tony Isabella said, uh, if I'm at a con, my booth is a safe place for LGTB. Wait, they LGTB. Okay. LGTBQ plus space folks or folks. <laughs> you always have to point that one out. Uh, if I'm at a con, my booth is a safe place for LGTBQ plus space folks or anyone being harassed by right wing creeps. Come to my table. We'll get the con involved. We'll do our best to get the creeps booted from the con. <laughs> I'm sorry. I've read this several times, but I kind of... The, the thing about cancel culture is... It is mainly written. As I mentioned before, you wouldn't say this to someone's face. Not, oh, you wouldn't say that to my face. Like, you're going to get punched. It's... You would sound so stupid. Um, <laughs> like, this guy's talking like a character. He's also like 70 and like 400 pounds. But uh, we'll do our best to get the creeps booted from the con. No event should ever be okay with these creeps. Okay. <laughs> There's a, a writer reusing the same word three times. Um, this is silly. It's, it's, it's farcical. Um, and as I said in a video, I believe, last month, it's an L to all of us that this ever had one day of success. This is... It's not even tattletaling because this just didn't happen. This is a grown man, Tony Isabella, creator of Black Lightning, making up stories <laughs> to impress people and feel... Like he's some kind of hero. Like, this is cancel culture in a nutshell. It is 40, 50, 60, 70 year old men and women playing pretend. Like, what the hell? And then, um, uh, sorry, Clownfish did a video on this uh, yesterday fantastic video and it wasn't just this Brianna Wu uh, quote uh, I guess there was like two to four uh, SJWs who had participated in cancel culture and now what did I say like two years ago I said cancel culture is going to come to an end and the people who supported it are going to pretend that they were against it the entire time so, um, let's just jump right into this. This is Brianna Wu. Uh, if you say that name sounds familiar. Well, Brianna Wu was, uh, or is a, uh, trans software engineer who is huge in the Gamergate era of calling everybody Nazis. It's, it's so dumb. <laughs> it's, it was like... 
Oh my god, it was like 75 years after World War II ended, and all of a sudden, all these fucking retards got out there, got out their spy glasses, got out their magnifying glasses, they were, they were, they were detectives, they were finding clues. <laughs> You're a Nazi. <laughs> what a bunch of retarded clowns. Anyway, uh, so, Brianna, uh, was... Very well versed in cancel culture, a willing participant, enthusiastic, a defamation just locked and loaded. You're a Nazi, you're a bigot, you're a whatever, you're a transphobe. And now, let's look at the date. This was January 29th this year, 5.51 a.m. I don't think I'm the only progressive with a ton of resentment built up over a decade at the fringe online left. It's such a cancerous set of tactics. Waves of anonymous accounts acting like cops. Morally loaded language out of proportion to any issue at hand. Taking statements out of context and twisting them in dishonest ways for a dunk. An inability to provide credible sources for extraordinary claims. A total disdain for nuance. And always, always, always a ravenous appetite to hurt people. Uh, I believe he meant to say on our own side. And the reputation of progressives has been destroyed accordingly. We're deeply unpopular in the party. We're seen as being harassing assholes online the way we used to critique gamers for behaving, by the way. The culture on Twitch and YouTube is constantly documenting the hypocrisy and insanity, and it's well-deserved. A decade ago, when we were more associated with policies... Okay, I don't know what she's talking about. Sorry, he's talking about it here. Um, uh, and says uh, a, a, basically a decade of work was utterly squandered. I'll always be a progressive, because I think the policies are the right ones. But it's time to admit that online progressives are too destructive to ever be a meaningful political force in America, except in the sense we are driving normal people into the arms of the right. So, um, this is fucking hilarious. It, it's fucking hilarious to see all of these bullies, to see all these extortionists, these social uh, media terrorists, in 2024, try to gaslight the world and themselves as if we haven't seen hundreds, thousands, tens of thousands of tweets from them, gleefully espousing cancel culture, which is a lot of things, but I consider it to be um, attempted murder. Cancel culture uh, is a way to drive someone to such despair that they kill themselves. Um, it's not merely getting someone fired, as Rich Johnson very dishonestly tried to say. It's like, well, uh, I was always against cancel culture, and uh, these YouTubers uh, did videos saying they wanted people fired, um, and that's the real cancel culture. No. Cancel culture is when you don't, you don't just try to get someone fired. You want them to be unemployable forever, which would lead to homelessness and despair and suicide. And um, I experienced this, uh, 2017, 2018 specifically. At first it was kind of strange, you know, because it was basically for a handful of rude comments. Um, and it just kept going on and on and on and on and on. And I believe in 2018, uh, I was either the subject or mentioned in, because I counted them, 30 separate hit pieces in mainstream media, not even geek media. Like, And you know how it is, like the space shuttle explodes, it's the news that day, the next day, the day after, two weeks later when they find a piece of wreckage in a swamp. It's not the news every single day for the entire year. But 
I was essentially, and I I didn't get it. I was like, I thought, um, I mean, they basically made their point. Like, what what is the reason to do? Oh, they're trying to get me to kill myself. Uh, they want me to put be put in such despair um, and to be so ostracized from everyone that I I take my own life. Now I'm lucky. Um, Suicide is a very serious problem for veterans, um, uh, especially combat veterans. And I have been to infinity minus one briefings about suicide awareness. And uh, I just don't have that gene or trait or whatever. Like, it's just, it's not an option. But they didn't know that. They didn't know it wasn't an option for me. And they spent years trying to get me and other people to blow our brains out. Um, I was listening to uh, a podcast with uh, Brett Easton Ellis, writer of American Psycho, and he was interviewing, um, uh, (laughs) sorry, he was interviewing, uh, I think I talked about this in a video, maybe I didn't, uh, last week. He sounded like, do you remember when Dennis and Dee started a podcast? So you're saying there's two wars? Like, he talks like that. So, I mean, he was very friendly, but I didn't think he was the best interviewer. So they were talking about cancel culture with Brandon Graham. And I thought I knew his situation quite well. I had major parts wrong about it. And that's one of the things that cancel culture is built on, that you won't have time to go down the rabbit hole on every single controversy. So you just have to assist assume it's not evil psychotic assholes trying to get strangers to kill themselves um so i'm not going to get into the whole brandon graham thing i got a major part wrong about it i thought the initial accuser was an ex-girlfriend it's a stranger he never met it was just a random account that gave a, a baseless uh no evidence accusation And it led to really serious repercussions for his life, his career, his relationships, his mental health. He's talked about that in, uh, he does like a, like, uh, blog, uh, cartoons, uh, like, sounds condescending. (laughs) Sounds like something like my mom would say, you do your little cartoons. Um, uh, there's a word for it. It's like a visual essay. So he does his comics, but he'll also do these one or two page uh, visual essays uh, about dealing with cancel culture and even as a fan of his work I got a huge part of it wrong I thought it all started from a he said she said from a, a, uh, a romantic partner of his no it was just a fucking stranger throwing out some baseless accusations and his whole life is fucked up I mean seriously for five years Sounds like he's doing better now. But the thing that bothered me is that um, Brett, (laughs) so you're saying we're in two wars? (laughs) Um, uh, He was like, well, you know, this all started from a good place and then it went really wrong. No, no, no. Now, I don't think Brett is maliciously misconstruing, rewriting history as, for example, Rich Johnston did. I included at the beginning of this uh, video a snippet from a Saturday Night Live sketch from like, I don't know, 94, 95, 30 years ago. And uh, one of the kids in the hall, I'm blanking on his name, is playing this weird talk show host. And you see the manipulative shit that he does, the little logic traps and, and twisting your words. That's not new. That was common enough to parody 30 years ago. It's it's always existed. One of the things that can't be snuck in as we we, we nail the, the coffin shut, you can't uh, slip in a little note that says, uh, uh, best of intentions. No, there were never good intentions. This was a bullshit tactic that was usually laughed at as it was on Saturday Night Live. 30 years ago 
And then for various reasons to, due to social media, especially just really getting in people's heads, it had an effectiveness that it never should have had. And it, it takes two to tango. It takes one morbidly obese 70 year old man with a neck pouch to make up a fake uh, scenario where right wing creeps are going around conventions assaulting gay people. I'm sorry, LGTBQ plus space people. It's one thing for just uh, a grown man to act ridiculous. And it's another thing for someone else to rubber stamp it or be afraid of it. These people were always clowns, but they were the evil clowns. <laughs> um, and uh, now they're trying to uh, rewrite history. Oh, I, I'm... Oh, they're like wagging their finger at the thing that they did for a decade. Or uh, as uh, Alex DeCampi and Tess Fowler uh, remaking themselves as mommy bloggers and kooky aunts. No. <laughs> Y'all spent every day for a decade trying to get strangers to kill themselves, trying to make strangers homeless, trying to drive people to the depths of despair. That's one of the reasons that I I think I'm a pretty f forgiving guy. But Joe Casada, I like his art. I like his era as editor-in-chief. But fuck that guy. I hope he gets hit by a double-decker bus and dragged for three blocks over cobblestone pavement. Because he joined in on a digital lynch mob like for like a four-day weekend. And it wasn't out of politics. It wasn't out of mental illness. It wasn't out of a miserable person who just likes to hurt per, uh, other people. He just joined it because it was fashionable at the time. He was sick or he had like a twisted ankle, some shit like that. And he just joined in. A digital lynch mob for fun as a pastime. What the fuck is wrong with you people? And now you're all... Uh, what do they say in the Marines? Hominus Dominus, kind of like, it's like the sign of the cross and you're making it all go away. Y'all spent a decade trying to get people to kill themselves. In cases like Tess Fowler, longer than a decade. She spent about 15 years trying to get Brian Wood to commit suicide. And, uh, he didn't, but his career was destroyed and I can't imagine it was good for any of his relationships. Um... But they're, they're trying a lot of stuff. They're trying a lot of stuff. Rich Johnson said, oh, I was always against it. Uh, but also, cancel culture is this thing that it isn't. It's uh, just wanting to, to get people fired. No, that's wanting to get people fired. Cancel culture is trying to make people radioactive, isolate them, drive them to despair, so they kill themselves. That's what cancel culture is. Um, and this, uh, this uh, I mean... The funny thing is I was having a thought uh, just the other day and it was like, you know, it's like one of those like, uh, not a plot twist, but like a plot element. It's like, oh, the spell can only be undone by the witch or the warlock who cast it. And I said to myself, and this was very recent, this was like two or three years ago, or <laughs> two or three days ago, I said, the only people who are going to finally be able to close the casket and apply the seal are the people who created it. And luckily, they've been made so ridiculous in the eyes of just the average person. The average person is aware of cancel culture and hates the people who do it. Uh, <laughs> it's, kind of, it's kind of hard to uh, 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 mind wipe Hundreds of thousands of people who have witnessed this, and in each fandom, tens of thousands, uh, to be like, uh, what? No, I'm just the kooky aunt from the big city. I love lattes. <laughs> Tess Fowler is talking about making homemade bread. <laughs> They're all turning into trad wives. Um, it's hilarious. Um, but, um, it 
it did not have a good beginning. It was never meant to help people. It's tactics that have been used throughout human history that usually just didn't have the power they had this time because of social media. It was new. We just assumed it was just something to do for fun. Uh, hey, there's this new app, Twitter, and everyone with a really cool, edgy sense of humor, just say whatever. Raw joke comes into your head, and we'll laugh. We're definitely not going to compile lists of it and use it to get you fired and destroy your career 10 to 15 years later. Uh, but, um, yeah. So, it is ridiculous. It's, it's stupid. But it's also vicious. And uh, I think the... Uh, and always, always, always a ravenous appetite to hurt people. Um, I did notice that Brianna said on our side as if it was okay to ravenously hurt people on the other, usually political spectrum, uh, side. Um, it's not a torture chamber. It's not supposed to be. It's not a court of any kind. And, uh, it should not be used this way again. It should be studied what happened. It should be recorded accurately what happened. I said uh, in some videos last year, I thought people were just kind of just not talk about this time period. And uh, but the people who participated in it, they would just be like, eh. they wouldn't have anything to brag about. But I, I think it's a permanent stain. I was talking to a friend, I was like, do you remember when people in comics were cool or mysterious? Or they had some sort of air about them? That's all gone. When you are a 40, 50, 60, or 70 year old man playing neighborhood of make-believe and tattling on other people, or even worse, you participate in it out of peer pressure or boredom, as in the case of Joe Quesada, you're never cool again. You are never edgy again. You are never enviable or mysterious. You are just, hey, Tom, did you turn in your uh, script for a Wonder Woman? Great, thanks. Yeah, talk to you next month. These people were superstars. They're not even stars anymore. They're just some schmo, and they did it to themselves. So I went uh, quite longer than I thought I was going to be on this. Apparently, I had a lot to say. Um, but before we uh, go, first kill graphic novel link is in the description. Thanks for watching. Bye.